up, Saji volunteers provide consolation cash and relief items to fire survivors in Thailand and Malaysia. We joined the 2013 Overseas Saji Volunteers Training Seminar at New Taipei City Central District. Welcome to Dial Headlines, I'm Helen Liao. Thank you for joining us. In Thailand's Bangkok, a fire in mid-October affected more than 120 households. Upon receiving the news, city volunteers quickly arrived with aid supplies. Recently, the volunteers returned to the area to hand out new uniforms and backpacks to students. But first, let's go to Malaysia, where city volunteers offer consolation cash and relief items to survivors of a fire in Batu Paha. On November 3rd, a fire broke out in this neighborhood in Batu Paha, Malaysia. In the aftermath, the victims looked through the debris, hoping to savage any remaining personal belongings. It is really chaotic right now. I can't find some valuable items and I don't know what to do. To safeguard his personal belongings, 85-year-old Mr. Liao accidentally injured his back. He says that all the money he has received from his son and grandchildren is now gone. The fire not only engulfed Li Rei Lan's stream, but also the money she had been saving in her bamboo coin bank. I've lost my bamboo coin bank. The fire destroyed all the money I had saved. I have to start from zero all over again. In the aftermath of the fire, city volunteers quickly arrived with consolation cash and supplies. Thank you all. Thank you for helping us. Meanwhile, to help students affected by a fire in mid-October, Thailand city volunteers arrived at Ramlau district in Bangkok with stationary backpacks and new uniforms. At first, I was really sad, but now I have decided to be strong. I will study hard and help my mother take care of my siblings. I'm moved by the volunteers' gesture. I hope the volunteers can continue to support us and guide us on the road to recovery. The fire in mid-October was caused by an angry couple, with a total of 120 households affected. In the aftermath, fire survivors been borrowed and her neighbors have been working around the clock to build their homes. In the meantime, as the temporary shelter is crowded, many have decided to set up tents outside the venue. The air circulation is better outside. It is really humid inside the shelter. To help the survivors get back on their feet, city volunteers surveyed their needs and promised to accompany them on the road to recovery. Moving to Taiwan, Taichung City Hospital Superintendent Jian Shouxing recently visited two disabled patients to encourage them to overcome their physical disabilities and rediscover their passion for life. A car accident six years ago left 35-year-old Liu Xiaomian with mental disabilities and paralysis from the waist down. She screams when she cries and she suffers from urine and bowel incontinence. Taichung City Hospital Superintendent Jian Shouxin visits Xiaomian to check up on her health. Xiaomian's innocence is much like that of a child and was excited by the volunteer's arrival. We can see a very genuine and innocent side to her. Ongoing support will help her with her cognitive recovery. Also suffering from paralysis is 31-year-old Mr. Wang, who injured his spine in a car accident and has been bedridden for more than 10 years now. By his bedside, Superintendent Jian offers words of encouragement. Both Liu Xiaomian and Mr. Wang rely on their mothers to take care of them. However, as their mothers are getting older, eventually the task will be too much. We don't want to wait for them to come to us. Rather, we hope the government focus their energies in seeking out these cases. 
where the sick and ailing cannot reach Tsuji volunteers love will travel. Today's clinical visit is just the beginning, as Tsuji volunteers will continue to care for these patients in the days ahead. In the United States, the Tsuji Northern California chapter recently held a winter-free clinic in Melpitas with 140 members of the public arriving to receive medical treatment. Apart from providing consultation, dental treatment was also offered to the residents. Arriving early in the morning, Tina Marks is glad to finally be receiving dental treatment. Without a job for the past four years, the woman has no means to pay for medical insurance, let alone a trip to the dentist. Everybody here is so nice. And since I'm going out to look for a job, I figure it's best that I get my smile fixed, my glasses fixed. That way it's much more easier when I go for my interviews. And when you're on limited income like I am, I'm on a fixed income from social security disability. And when I find out about services that offer medical assistance or dental program, and since it's been so long that my teeth looked at, I felt it was appropriate to come and have them looked at today. And the doctor did a very good job. The city Northern California chapter has held two community free clinics each year for the past 17 years. This time, some 70 medical staff and volunteers were mobilized to help out. You know how expensive it is to receive dental work in the U.S., so these residents really appreciate free clinics like this. We are really glad to have this opportunity as well to not have to think about other problems but just serve these patients the best we can. Besides tending to the needs of residents, volunteers also seize the opportunity to introduce the idea behind Tsuji's bamboo coin banks. I think I have learned to talk about love and compassion and teach others how to cultivate fields of blessings. Though it may be a small bamboo coin bank, we can still contribute a little of our love to doing good deeds. I think many are willing to give a little of what they have and donate their spare change to help those in the greater need. From that, I can tell that residents here are really kind-hearted and compassionate. The free clinic not only provides 114 low-income owners in Malpitas with much-needed health care, but also gives them the hope of better and brighter days ahead. In Taiwan, Tsuji volunteers held a new shoe scholarship award ceremony to honor outstanding students in Tainan. This year, 155 students in the area received the award. Among the recipients were a brother, sister pair, and 13-year-old Yang Peiyu, who is on track to perhaps compete for Olympic gold one day. In Tainan, Tsuji's new shoot scholarship award ceremony honors over 100 students for their academic performance. Among the recipients were Da Nei junior high school student Yang Pei Yu, who was also a competitive weightlifter. I will focus on my training and studies and do my best to help my family. Since now I am being helped by other people, I will help the less fortunate too. Although coming from a single family, Yang has never given up on her dreams and recently won second place in a national weightlifting competition. I will do my best and never give up. I will not give up on my dream. In the future, I want to become an Olympic medal winner and a weightlifting trainer. In total, 155 scholarship recipients in Tainan were honored. At the award ceremony, over 130 parents came to witness the special occasion. Skillfully sewing is the grandfather of new shoot scholarship recipient Chen Yu Hao and Chen Yu Jun. Grandpa often asks us to review our studies, and he made a study plan for us to review our homework. Based on Grandpa's study plan, we need to review all nine subjects on a daily basis. This brother-sister pair was raised by their 70-year-old grandfather. As the elder brother of the family, Yu Hao shoulders the responsibility of looking after his sister, as well as his grandfather, who is recovering from neck surgery. As a person, you need to be honest and well-behaved. I always teach them to walk the right path. Making a lot of money is not necessary. Yu Hao and Yu Jun both work hard at their studies. They have demonstrated determination, optimism and confidence. From their example, I see the hope and future of our next generation. 
Despite living in hardship, the family of three feels content with the life they share. In addition, Siji's timely assistance will carry the Chen family through the hard times ahead. Over the past weekend, the very first year in blessing ceremony kicked off at the 2013 Overseas City Volunteers Training Seminar in Sanchong, Taiwan, to ensure the 425 volunteers from across the globe felt at home. Their local peers have worked tirelessly to ensure everything went off without a hitch. The province master we will try to help because Singapore has a lot of doctors. I have made a promise to the master that I will try my best to recruit more members as there are over 9,000 doctors in Singapore. It is with realization that there is commitment. The first 2013 year in placing ceremony kicks off in an atmosphere of gratitude and thanks. Tsuji has changed me a lot in every aspect of my life. I am truly grateful for the master's dharma and teaching. As Master Jenny hands out envelopes which symbolize blessing and wisdom, seeing all her disciples from across the world gathered in the same hall, she shares her joys within. On this day, 1,179 people took refuge in Master Zheng Yin. With the combined efforts of the volunteers, they are sure to spread further goodness and compassion throughout the world. This is the yellow marking, and the white marking is for the white buttons. Yellow is for the yellow button on the mixer, and white is for the white button on the mixer. It's that simple. The simplest of ways is often the most effective. Regardless of complexity, the senior volunteers have it all under control. If it's two lines, it means pause. All you need to do is press it. If there is an arrow, it means play. The sister doesn't know what its technical name is. You only find out at the end that she meant play. Even for the team of translators, nothing is too difficult, as they translate from Chinese to English, to Filipino and even to Burmese. At the same time you're listening to the Chinese, you have to process it in your head and translate what you've heard into English. And as the guest speakers continue to speak, you have to listen to their next sentence. So it's important for translators to keep focused. When I first agreed to run the new center, I was very worried because I didn't have any experience. But a sister saw me and told me not to worry. Our public relations team set up a line group chat. For instance, if we need manpower on a certain day, when PR volunteers from other districts see our message, they can reply to confirm their attendance. The unity and teamwork of the Taiwan City volunteers have made their overseas counterparts feel right at home. Next, main Malaysia City volunteer Cao Yanping, who was addicted to smoking and drinking when she was young, which led to bone kill atrophy. Cao says after walking the city path and joining other volunteers in home visitations has made her realize her past mistakes. Following her certification as a city volunteer, Cao promised to continue introducing city's missions and ideas to more people back home. Here at City Banqiao Grounds, numerous volunteers from home and abroad attend overseas city volunteers training seminar. Among the trainees is Malaysia volunteer Cao Yanping, who has suffered from bronchial atrophy since young. Although I am not in good shape and suffer from many illnesses, I am happy to be a city volunteer. I cherish each day that I can help the less fortunate. It was not until Cao joined Siji's work four years ago that she realized how blessed she was. Now she is able to treat her children with patience and love.
I would rather change myself than change others. Now my family is more harmonious. My children also treat me well. They said it is the right time for me to become a certified volunteer this year as they didn't feel I was ready to be certified last year. Although Cao is soon to undergo another hip bone surgery, she still insisted on coming to Taiwan to take part in the training seminar and vowed to carry through her promise to Master Zheng Yan. Master Zheng Yan's Million Bodhisattva campaign is like a gift to us. We have to do our best to fulfill the Master's mission. I will follow in the Master's footsteps throughout the rest of my life, and hopefully my devotion can motivate my family to follow suit. Now Cao learns to cherish each day of devotion and the blessings, as she will only see her days ahead ever more prosperous and appealing. Volunteer Mo Zewen from the Tsuji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter in Malaysia used to believe that supernatural powers could help others overcome obstacles in life. It was not until Mo joined Tsuji that he realized the true joy of selfless giving and decided to devote himself to the Buddhist NGO. One may think that having supernatural powers means having the ability to make the impossible possible. Tsuji volunteer Mo Zewen shared this belief before he joined Tsuji. My previous master used supernatural powers to make others believe in him. He made some believers feel that he could help resolve things we average people cannot resolve. Though having helped many people, doubt and worries accumulated for more over time. At the temples, we often see many supporters praying for their dreams to come true, but because things don't always go according to plan, they then come back to curse or for revenge. I've seen too many cases like this, and they left me with many doubts. In 2007, when a neighbor invited Mo to join Tsuji's recycling effort, it was then that the volunteer met Master Zhen Yan and finally found a practical way to reach those in need. Through taking part in the home visitations over time, I was deeply moved and felt that this is how I want to reach out to others. In a religion that is based on humanity, Master Zheng Yan doesn't use supernatural powers but Buddhist philosophy to help us understand karma and how we all have our own dates to pay in life. Today, having found his purpose to life, Mo Zewen makes the most of every day to do good deeds. But Mo is very devoted to Tsuji's work. Despite his busy schedule of work and family, he still manages to make the most of his spare time to volunteer. His selfless giving to charity has been witnessed by all those volunteers, and he is a great example for us to follow. Reaching out to those in need with the right belief not only helps relieve suffering, but for Mo Zewen, it also brings a sense of peace and accomplishment. Also receiving their certification this year are 33 Tsuji volunteers from Canada, including Tsuji Academy teacher Huang Shufang and three Tsuji alumni who all promised to spread Tsuji's missions far and wide. On stage stands three newly certified Chichens, all former Chichings. As Chichings and now Chichens, the three are determined to follow in Master Zheng Yan's footsteps and take on the responsibilities that come. Master Zheng Yan says there's not enough time, so I hope to shoulder some of the burden for her in the things she wants to accomplish. Thus, in Toronto, I'm a deputy group leader in the General Affairs Department and also accompany the Chichings there. These teachings have cultivated many students, one of whom is Huang Shu Fang, a Tsuji Academy teacher in Canada. When I started, it was with fear and trepidation. I never thought I would be a teacher. Every week's Jing aphorism teachings are meticulously prepared using stories, videos, or discussions. Teachers work to instill their messages into each student's heart. 
One time at the supermarket, someone called out Ms. Wang. In my mind, the first reaction was that it must be a Tsuji student. After seeing him, I saw that he was. I then thought this really was Tsuji's humanitarianism at work. Tsuji's education has really reached these children, as normally students don't say hello to their teachers outside of school. It is the impression she's left on these students that has inspired Huang to continue with her teaching post. Now she vows to help spread Tsuji's missions further. The longer I teach, the more Dharma joy I gain. I hope in the future I can inspire more Tsuji school teachers to train for volunteer certification and absorb the master's wisdom. In Canada, the Vancouver Tsuji Academy recently held a personal development course for parents and volunteers where they learn how to make good use of recyclable items in their everyday life. Chen Shao Sui, an expert in green living, also shared tips on how to craft useful items out of plastic bottles. An expert at green living, Canada Tsuji volunteer Chen Shao Sui is sharing his experiences and tips with a few parents and volunteers at the Tsuji Academy. You don't always have to buy a container. You can craft one and just ignore the weird looks you get from people. Teaching them how to turn trash into an useful item has beautified environmental protection. This is a piece of washcloth from my home. Reusing an old washcloth to trap moisturizer in plants, Chen has really shared useful tips in horticulture, and many walk away with added confidence in their green thumb. With small contributions we can do great deeds, so each of us can take home a bamboo coin bank to help. Before taking home a coin bank, each volunteer writes down their wish and hopes for the future. With a grateful heart, I hope for health and improvements each day. Through this short lesson, these parents and volunteers gain wisdom not only applicable for school, but also in life as well. In Taiwan, three schools in Taipei held a joint carnival where under a principal's invitation, Da An Tsuji volunteers set up a booth to promote environmental protection as well as vegetarianism, turning what was once just an event filled with an indulgent good time into one filled with meaning. <laughs> In Taiwan, three schools in Taipei are together holding a school carnival. And among the shouting of food vendors comes a different sort of voice. At the Hoping Senior High section of the carnival, the An Siji volunteers were invited to set up a booth to introduce environmental concepts, as well as vegetarian food to fairgoers. I hope to educate my students with environmental concepts early on so that they may help to protect our planet at an early age. It's not enough to just memorize the motto, but time recycling categories are set up for the students to practice sorting. The principal contacted us and hoped that the school can visit Wolong Recycling Station to give students a place to practice sorting recyclables. At this year's school carnival, an element of learning is added to the merriment of the fair, giving the event a more meaningful experience. We stay in Taiwan at the end of the show. Students at the kindergarten in Penghu visited the local Tsuji recycling station to get some hands-on experience on how to sort recyclables. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dye Headlines. Goodbye.